It's going on. I say it's going on. If God said it, you can believe it. You can believe it. Do you believe it? I know he can. I know he will. I believe you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. I can do. I can do all things. Do Christ that strengthen me. There's nothing impossible. Them that believe, take a look at me. I've got the victory. If God said I can, I can. If God said I can. If God said I can. Yeah, hallelujah. Mm. Come on and praise. There's a praise right there. Go on and praise him for your victory. If you got it, do you have it? Do you want it? You know you need it. God said you got to have it. God said it. God said it. God said it. Hallelujah. If God said it, hallelujah. If God said it, hallelujah. If I, if God said it, I can do it. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. I believe God. I believe God. Amen. Let's stand to our feet in deference to the word of God. Hallelujah. We will be reading from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. Let us read in unison. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels mercy, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. I kind of like that scripture that talked about Jesus being exalted. Let's go back and read that just really quickly, Bishop. 
verse 9. Let's read 9 through 11 once again. And read it with power. With the Holy Ghost power that God has given you. Let's read it with that power. Ready? Read. Wherefore, God has also exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the doers, and hearers of his word. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 everybody say, Jesus, Jesus, ooh, Jesus, 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 oh, oh, oh. hallelujah, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. I need you, I need you, I need you. I need Jesus. I need you, I need you, I need you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You're worthy. Worthy, you're worthy, worthy. Touch today, so say, Heal, 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 I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you so much. I love you, I love you, I love you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Something about the name of Jesus that gives me peace down in my soul. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, no, no. There's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. Everybody say Jesus, 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 You might not understand why I praise him. Yeah. And I don't really care if you do. Because nobody but Jesus was there for me. Yeah. Nobody brought me through. So now, now, now I lift my hands. Yeah. And now I magnify his name. And if you love Jesus, 
as much as I love Jesus. Well, you lift your hands and do the same. Help me say Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The altar. Cast all your cares on him. Whatever it is, bring your burdens to Jesus and lay them there. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I have a promise. He'll speak to your heart. He'll speak to your soul. He'll speak to your mind. If you lay your medicine, Jesus, oh, Jesus, yes. Jesus, Jesus. Some of you are walking up and you should be saying this word. Help me, help me, help me. Help me, help me, help me. Help me, help me. Some should say, change me, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And if you're still waiting for the Holy Ghost, say, fill me, fill me, fill me, fill me, fill me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Believe, believe today. Believe that God is more than enough. Hey. Believe that God is more than able. Yes, 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 yes. Believe that you are the apple Jesus, of his eye. Jesus, Believe that there is nothing too hard for him. Believe that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. According to the power. Mother Jeffrey, so good to see you today. Hallelujah. Oh.
you was already here when we got here. And you made the way for us to get here. So you have already prepared everything for us. But Lord God, in the act of obedience, we just want to say thank you. We came into your courts with thanksgiving and into your gates with praise. Even though we have a lot of situations and a lot of problems, Lord God, you are our God and you are our Savior. And there's not anything too hard for the Lord. So Lord, we just want to say thank you for the good times and we thank you for the bad times. We didn't come to beg, Lord God. We came to, Lord, to plead the blood and to ask you, Lord, to God, to help us. And Lord, because we know that you will give us everything according to your riches and glory. Lord, you know every situation. You know every problem. You know every sickness and disease, Lord God. But the trials don't come to make us weak. They come to make us strong. So we came before your throne, God, with confidence, knowing that you are the God of our salvation. And we know who we serve. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God who is able to deliver us from any situation. But we ask you to rebuke the devil for our sake, Lord God. And we touch and agree right now for each other and those that are not here. Lord God, we ask you to remove every disease, every sin, everything that will so easily beset us. Oh God, we ask that you would let us worship you in holiness, in the beauty of your holiness. And we lift up holy hands right now without wrath or doubting, and we give praise and glory to your name, and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 As you're going to your seat, encourage somebody. Hallelujah. Encourage somebody in the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Glory, glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Today we are going to shift our service somewhat a little later. As you see, we have the bread and the body of the Lord here. And we're, we're going to probably do something that will be maybe downright shocking to some of you. We're going to we're going to talk about communion. Everybody say the spirit of holy communion. I want to share some stuff with you about communion today that maybe you have not considered. And and um there were, there were several questions in the impartation class today. Um, things like, you, you know, who can take communion and who cannot take communion. Uh, things like, um, what does it mean to eat and drink damnation to your soul questions? Someone ask, do you have to be saved to take communion? And I tried my best according to the word of God. Somebody say according to the word. 
to answer those questions. There are a number of things that we do because traditionally they sound good and, and feel good and we have held them. But just to get you thinking, when Jesus served the disciples communion, were they saved? just asking you the question. I didn't give an answer. I'm, like, I'm asking you your opinion. There are many things that we hold dear, and there's a right to hold things dear. <clears throat> but if we look at what the Bible says, some of those things have been orchestrated by us in an attempt to please God. I don't think that our forefathers or anyone like that just struck out to do anything that was improper but many times the things that they did that they did not have an understanding they still had an application hallelujah they didn't mean any harm when they stopped you from playing marbles because they thought the bible said marble not praise the lord <laughs> and it actually was a marvel not but there are things that we do that we do sometimes out of not fully understanding. And moving forward, I want everyone to have a clear understanding of the power and the spirit of communion. My God, and it will be liberating for you. There will be healing there will be deliverance and it will be in a sense more than a blood transfusion. I'm looking for new life. I'm looking for getting the clock reset. Who could just use a fresh start today? Hallelujah. Maybe not in everything in your life, but there are some aspects of all of our lives where we could just use a fresh start. Some of the things that we have worked on and developed to a point, we don't want to go back through that, praise the Lord. But as I was telling the class today, as we grow in God, there are times that you have to get to a place to see how much you still need to grow. God didn't even allow you to know some of the things that you need to do because it would have knocked you over and made you give up. So he strengthened you in one area to bring you to that place so that you can look into another area and say, you know what, I got to deal with that now. Do I have a witness in the house today? So when we get to this teaching today, and uh, I almost brought me a table to sit down there in front of the table, a table before the table. I, I, I'm, I'm asking God, I'm asking God, I'm asking Jesus to allow us to get the full benefit of this table. If taking it incorrectly causes death and damnation, taking it correctly, huh? Did you get it? If doing it wrong can make you wrong, then doing it right ought to light your life up like never before. <laughs> Brother Rob brought me this paper up here, and I didn't even... <laughs> Do you remember it? Well, come on in. Brother Rob did me like I do some of you and ask you to do stuff you're not really ready to do. So I would be a, a hypocrite dressed Steve Carroll if I didn't try. Even though I don't remember this song, I'm trying to ask the Lord to help me. But by your faith, Volta, um, 
you may have to start Deacon Rob. I know it's my verse, but I don't remember how it goes. That's what I'm saying to you. Praise the Lord. No. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? I want you to understand that those scriptures are found in the Bible right in the middle of Paul talking about the failure of the children of Israel in the desert. He's talking about them being idolatrous. Right in the middle of him talking about them being in idolatry, and he said that for with many of them, God was not pleased, and he overthrew them in the desert. And right in the middle of that, he talks about the cup. The idea here is that communion, the, 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 the word was real popular a few years ago, maybe 20 years ago now, Lord, koinonia. Some of you have heard that word. People start naming their churches koinonia. It means fellowship. It means fellowship. The idea behind communion is intimacy. In fact, one of the words for communion, a koinonia, is intercourse. Hallelujah. Means to be intimate. Means to be together. Means to be unified. He's saying, how could you be rebellious and take the cup and the bread? doesn't work like that. Even in the Bible, in the, in the New Testament, well that was New Testament too, referring to the old, but even when Paul was given the instructions at the church at Corinth, let me read that for you. He said in, in, in Corinthians, and we, we know this, the 11th chapter, verse 23, for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Here we are following something from someone who wasn't even there. Paul was not at the Last Supper when Jesus instituted communion. But he said the Lord told him, which meant he had a rendezvous at another time. Hallelujah to God. Uh, Jesus met him uh, on the road of Damascus, and then they went on a, what do you call, a resort in the desert. Praise the Lord. He's writing them, and, and, and he's giving them a bunch of instructions. And at the end, he says, the rest I'm going to set in order when I come. What do you mean? The church of Corinth was more tore up than greater Emmanuel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> it was supposed to have been a funny. Y'all didn't get it. Praise the Lord. The whole idea, and when we look at communion, when we look at what the Bible talks about it, I think over the years we have lost the spirit of it. The foundation of it is forgiveness. Everybody say forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember anything about forgiveness from last week? Forgiveness is the government. Of, there is a government of forgiveness. 
it regulates things. Just like the government of Hamilton County, the government of Cincinnati, it regulates things. Forgiveness is that thing that God did for us and that we're supposed to do for each other that regulates our relationship and what we do and how we treat each other. Paul was writing to the church at Corinth about communion because they were having a mess at communion. And, and someone say, well, do you have to be saved to take communion? We always insinuate that. We always say that. The Bible does not say that specifically. It does not. Look, look at it this way. And we can get technical. Everybody that was in the church at Corinth if it's like everybody in the church at Greater Emmanuel or Zion Temple or Bethlehem Temple or Abundant Life, everybody in the church is not saved. That is in the physical building, in the congregation that attends. Everybody in the body of Christ, which is also called the church, hallelujah, should be saved or supposed to be saved. Hallelujah. But the act of, 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 of the damnation of coming to communion unworthily deals with your ability or your understanding or your application of discerning the body of Christ. He said for this reason some are, some are sick and some are weak and some sleep or die. When you come and take the table unworthily is it speaking about your quality of life? Well it could be. So what is unworthily and what is discerning the Lord's body? Is it his body? Is it talking about the body that died on the cross that was resurrected? Hallelujah. How do you discern that body if that's what he's talking about? Or is he talking about the body of Christ that is comprised of all of the believers in the body? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we look at the context of the scripture, he's talking to them about the fact that they were carrying on one with the other at the Lord's table because some were drunk, some were glutton, some had food, some had didn't, some was eating first, some didn't want to eat with others. They had a mess going on. Some wanted to be at the head table, some wanted to sit at the back so they could sneak out. And he's saying, you are not discerning the Lord's body. You are all in the body, and the only reason any of you can come to the table is because of the blood of Jesus that forgave you in the first place. You missed it. Let me break that down. If the Lord had not forgiven us, who would have a right to be at his table? Who? My hand is not up. Let's just ask the question. Since we were all in sin, since we all had to be forgiven, and since we're all in the body, we should not be making judgment about what's going on when it comes to this place, when it comes to the table. No one could be at the table if it were not for the blood of Jesus. No one could be at the table. Hallelujah. The Bible says what? Without the remission of uh, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. With no remission, you don't get admission. You are not admitted without a ticket. And you and me could not pay the price of the ticket for admission. Nobody could buy a communion ticket. The president, Bill Gates, Rockefeller, he wouldn't rock that. Hallelujah. Nobody could buy a communion ticket. So, God in his wisdom devise a plan so that we could be intimate with him again. Because sin separated us from God. And all of the sacrifices, oh God, the, the, the word for, for offering that you all just brought in, I almost try to work it in here, but 
that there was too much going on in my mind. I said, Lord, I don't know how to do it. So maybe when you are bringing your offering up today, when you bring an offering up, you are coming to approach God. It, it means I'm break, because I mess up. I have to bring something to get my relationship right with him. That is why when Adam and Eve sinned, that's why they had to bring an offering. Hallelujah. The lead that they did could not cover up the sin that they had committed. Hmm. Because there was no shedding of blood in a leaf. Hallelujah. So something had to die. It wasn't just the blood, it was also the death that came after or the result of the blood. Or maybe the blood came as a result of the death. But however you look at it, there was blood and death in order to secure an admission ticket for me and you. And we just couldn't do it. There was nothing about our blood, Adam's blood, Moses' blood, Samson's blood, David's blood, uh, Isaiah's blood, Hezekiah's blood, John's blood, James' blood blood, hallelujah, Jacob's blood, Rachel's blood, there was no blood but Jesus' blood that could bring us to the place where we are today, where we are sitting together in a heavenly place in Christ Jesus. It's only because of the blood and since he shed the blood for everybody, everybody has a right to the table. Somebody asked the question, well, you know, is that like when a person uh, uh, gets free from demons and, and if they don't get the Holy Ghost, or if they don't, you, you know, seven more demons? I said, don't confuse a miracle with the miracle of salvation. You can pray a demon out of folk and they still don't necessarily get the Holy Ghost. You can rebuke sickness. Oh, there's a difference between healing and salvation, even though salvation is a type of healing. Well, I know I'm saved because in 1962, God dropped a tumor off the back of my elbow. No, you got delivered from a tumor. Unless you repented of your sins and followed the Bible instructions, that's different from salvation. What we have here is an ordinance of the church. It was given uh, by the church, but it does not specifically say. And, and, and every man has to be persuaded in his own mind. And persuaded, you have, to, you have to understand this. Discerning the Lord's body is saying that at this table, it doesn't matter how rich you are, how poor you are. doesn't matter what you drive or where you live or what you got on your back or the lack thereof. The only reason you're at the table is because of Jesus. And there's no reason for anybody to feel any way about anybody else except gratitude for being there yourself. Again, if doing it wrong causes death and damnation, doing with understanding should cause a surge in your life. I believe in communion being a blood transfusion. I believe in communion that by faith, everybody said by faith. That by faith, the Lord allows that blood that has everlasting power, that has healing virtue. Not just healing of the body, but healing of the soul, healing of the spirit, healing of the mind. I tried to share with some of the ministers today the importance of their spirit and their mind when they are taking someone to be baptized. 
I tried to tell them that, that, that as far as I know, when, everything that Warren McMillan did, he prayed over the socks. He prayed over the plastic bags. He prayed over the floor. He prayed over the water. Anything that had to do with that soul, he was asking God to bless it. He didn't go at it as an inconvenience. He, he went back to God, I, I got to go eat. And, uh, all these people, uh, we probably never see them again. Wrong spirit. Wrong spirit. You have to go. If you're working with a soul at the altar, you are there saying, God, thank you for an opportunity for me to help turn somebody's life around. God, thank you for a chance. What I do, no matter how great or how small, this is affecting their eternity. You have given me an opportunity now to give back to you. Hallelujah. I can't save nobody. All I can do is tell them about it. All I can do is encourage them. All I can do is tell them, look what God did for me. I used to be a mess, but God picked me up and turned me around. I could not afford to be here in God's house, in God's presence, but he caused me to sit together in heavenly places. It was not of works that I've done, lest I should boast, but it was by the grace of God. It was by the obedience. Fellowship. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. The government or the necessity of forgiveness. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the power behind the clemency. It allows us to be next of kin and free from sin. Look at somebody say, next of kin. Legally, stuff that goes down is done by blood relationship or legal relationship. If there's no blood relationship, then they look for the legal thing. The blood of Jesus allows us legally to be the son of God. The blood of Jesus allows us legally to be brothers and sisters in Christ. The blood of Jesus goes beyond our address. I got to keep saying that. Goes beyond our education. Goes beyond the way we think or what we like or what we don't like. Because in order to get to the cross, in order to get to the table, in order to sit down, it takes his blood to make the difference in everybody's life. Oh, what a privilege it is for you to be able to take the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus. Oh, what an honor it is for him to make a way to have our sins remitted and reduced. We can come boldly to the throne. We can walk up in here, sit down, and expect a miracle. What about the folk ain't living right? Well, if anything going to get you right, ought to be getting closer to God. If anything's going to turn your life around, it is be able to have an intimate session with the Lord. Kononia intimate, close, not far off the way the Bible says as sometimes we were far off with no hope without God in the world, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, alienated from the promise. All of those things that we could not do, all of those things that our flesh would not do, Jesus, hallelujah, coming down through 40 and two generations, God decided to die for us. God decided to buy us back. God decided to redeem us. God decided to pick us up out of the dung hill. God decided that we were worth saving. It's all because 
because of him. It's all because of him. It's all because of him. All because of him. This is a special opportunity of communion today. I have no fear or condemnation by making the table open myself. If there's something wrong with that, then the Lord will deal with me about it. Don't you mess up yourself. Don't you mess up yourself. This falls on these shoulders as leadership. I'm saying, come, get intimate with God. In order to be intimate, you can't perpetrate. In order to be intimate in the natural sense, you have to uncover. In order to be intimate, you have to bear the facts. We've already covered the fact that according to this, according to the word, the way it's written, he was telling them, you come up in here with an attitude about somebody, you're drinking damnation and death. You're not discerning the especially if the attitude is you ain't got a right. <sighs> there are a lot of things in a church setting that different people don't have rights to. If you're on the health professionals and you need I'm sorry, if you're not on the health professionals and you need some juice or maybe you just want some juice because you're thirsty and the juice is for those that with the diabetical situations and other things. You don't have a right just because you're thirsty to go up there and get the sun and delight for the other people. You don't need to put your little thirsty, sticky hands on the refrigerator and get their juice out. You out of order. But this is not the case at the table and what we're talking about now. Somebody say common ground. It's common ground because of Christ. This is not for you to get a snack. Let me go over here and get this communion snack because I don't have time to get me a sandwich after church. This is not a snack. You are saying, Lord, I believe that your blood and your body is going to do something for my life. I know I'm unworthy of it, but since you have made it available, I am trusting you. I know I need change. I know I need a help. I know I need to do better. I want to do better. Uh, hallelujah. And Lord, uh, I, let this be a fresh start for me. Let this be a turnaround for me. Let this be a benchmark for me. She'll give you all the details, but and it, it shook me when, when she said this for all kind of reasons. She said, honey, I thought it was it. She said, I was praying, other folk were praying, folk were, said people were throwing up everywhere. That the plane went sideways and then it went straight up in the air. She said, I was telling the Lord, Lord, what I did, what I didn't, what I knew, what I didn't know. She said she was, she was doing that last 
three, four, five, six, seven. She said, if this is it, every, all of us don't have that point of saying, Lord, if this is it, correct whatever needs correcting. She said, you talking about church that night when they got off that plane? I've been on some bad rides before, but I've never been on one quite like that. I don't, I don't desire to be on one of those at all, praise the Lord. My point is this. This is a life and death situation. It's life and death because you need to look at yourself. But that scripture says, if a man examine himself, he says, don't let me do it. You need to do it. He said, but if I do do it, I'm going to, you, Lord help mercy. This, this, would, be, this would be one indication of, of it being uh, 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 for people associated with church. And I have to say that like that because we all know that people that are in the church, everybody that's in the church is not really in the church. Ain't nobody said nothing too much. Some folk are perpetrating up here. Some folk do exactly what they want to do. Some folk don't need me to be their pastor because they pastor it themselves. I don't mind you pastoring yourself. I don't know how to be good, but I don't want you pastoring nobody else up in here. Praise the Lord. Y'all remember when I, when I became the pastor, I said, everybody turn your church in. Y'all remember that? I said, turn all your churches in. Praise the Lord. The body of Christ is designed so that we must function anyhow for the kingdom. It has to function regardless of what is going right or what is going wrong. The, the spirit of the kingdom is connected to the spirit of communion because it speaks of unity. It means to be a partaker. It means to be in fellowship, in relationship. One of the words even means sponsorship. Same koinonia. It means contribution and distribution. Because God contributed his blood, we are able to distribute the gospel. We are able to bring people that are far off into an intimate relationship by the word of God, introducing them to the blood of Jesus that will cleanse them, hallelujah, from all sin. The blood of Jesus that can also heal their body. The blood of Jesus that brings peace in the midnight hour because it covers you from head to toe. It covers your house. It covers your yard. It covers your car. It covers your children. It just covers so he's saying, how in the world would you not want to be intimate, intimate, together, close with the thing that's covering you? It's like freezing in the night and kicking the cover off. You sit up there shivering in the bed, and there's the blanket right there, but you're too lazy to pick it up and put it over you. And in your mind, you're talking about, I'm going to get the blanket, and you're still shaking. How many have done that beside me? <laughs> Won't even reach over and pull it over you. I'm telling you today, get the blood and pull it over you. <laughs> Cover your head, cover yourself from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. This blood works. This blood has power. This blood has redemption. This blood has healing. This blood has cleansing. This blood has liberation. Talking about communion. He said, Whose temple you are. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He said, would you take God's body and join it to a harlot? That's what the Bible says. It's showing you how intimate it is to be connected with God. And because you are connected with him, there are things that you should not do in your body, in your mind, in your heart.
it does reach to the highest mountain in my life, in your life. No matter what that mountain is, you're about to participate in something that will reach your Mount Everest. Hallelujah! You're about to participate in something that will go, hallelujah, to, to your, your fault. That, that real, uh, not San Andreas, there's some fault down in the ocean. I can't remember the name of it now. It's supposed to be the deepest place on the earth. Whatever. Your whatever. My whatever. My whatever. It is so unique that all of us can be intimate with Jesus at the same time without interfering with each other. Hear us, I don't have to worry about your relationship with him. I don't have to worry about the number of times he forgave you for the same thing over because I'm thinking about the times he forgave me. I'm not worried about how many times you promised and broke your promise. I'm thinking about the times I didn't keep mine. I'm thinking about his grace is so great it looks beyond my fault and he's still alive. Lord have mercy. In spite of who we are, he still anoints us, Marie. He still allows us to call. Oh, Lord, have mercy. In spite of having a bad day, in spite of when we don't want to be bothered with nobody and nothing, he never shuts us out. I'm trying to tell you how precious this is. I'm trying to tell you how wonderful this is. I'm trying to tell you, no matter how often or not often we do it, never take this for granted. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Never take it for granted that you can partake of his body and his blood. Always approach with humility and expectation. Deacon Holland, I saw something yesterday that encouraged my heart during prayer, and I, I was at, I got here late, and, and, and now I, I I walk the building. I used to stay over in that corner, but now I walk. I walk all the way around, and then I walk every section while I'm praying by itself. Every section, section by section, and then I go up in the pulpit and I go all back through the baptisms and all of that. When I got here yesterday, I, like I said, I was late, and Mary was over there praying, and, and Beulina was here, Sister Holland, good God Almighty. And I saw Beulina get up, and, and she had, uh, she, I, I guess she said she'd been having problems throwing up, so she had a bag with her. And I, and I saw her get up and start walking. And she was walking so weak. And I thought maybe she was going to the restroom. And she was sitting right there where Pearl and I were. But when she got to the back, she turned and went that way. And I think Clay was over here and I was over that way. And he walked close to her at meeting. And, and then, Mary, did you, 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 you saw him? Oh, yeah, I know you were praying, but, and, and, uh, she was walking so weak. And when I saw him pass her, I said, she wants to walk today. In spite of the condition. And, 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 and then she, she, she walked over, and when she got coming up this aisle, Pat saw her. And I saw Pat grab her by the hand, and they were together, maybe right in the back. And they started walking together. Hallelujah. And, and, and they walked together. And the next thing I knew, 
she was walking, praying for her, just praying for her. And at the end of that prayer, I saw Eulina get a stride by herself. She made a lap all by herself. Woo! You can't tell me God is not a way maker. You can't tell me when we touch and agree for one another. You can't tell me when we get intimate and love one another. You can't tell me. We are hindered by our human knowledge of stuff. We are hindered because of what we think we know. We are hindered because of our history and our... You have to throw that out and say, God, you know more than I need you. I want you. I want to be pleased again in your sight. I don't want you to cast me off away. Fellowship. A couple of more scriptures and we'll, 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 we'll go on and do this. Hmm. Hmm. Glory to God. 